Okay, hello. Uh, my name is Carlos Rodriguez, and I'm a Psycho Consultant with Arc Systems, and I welcome you to Performing A-B Testing Part 3. So what I'm going to do now is dive right into the agenda. Um, this is a three-part series. Uh, if I need more time, I will create a Part 4, but we'll see. Uh, but in Part 1, I talked about value versus traffic because it's not enough just to... Uh, recognize the traffic coming to your site, you've got to know what they're doing, and goals is one way of tracking the activity they're participating in. So in other words, we, it's more important that they actually carry out what you want them to do than just show up to the site. And if you want more information about our site course take on that, please watch the part one video. Uh, part two, we talk about the, the why of testing and some other information as it relates to testing, such as the testing cycle, what is AB versus multivariate testing, page testing, uh, the ability to do a page test, which we uh, actually demoed in the last video, as well as some other final points I wanted to cover. So um, if you want to watch that, please watch part two of the video set, which focuses on the testing topic in general. But in part three, we want to do a lot more demoing of the testing tools that SciCorp provides. So uh, I, I do want to complete my uh, pay test demo in terms of certain aspects I want to bring to light. But then I want to dive right into A-B testing in SciCorp, talk about how it's done and what the results tends to look like when you perform it. Okay, and for my example, I'm using a fake booking site, uh, which, and I'm going to be focusing on Orlando vacation packages, but simply because I'm from Florida, so I know Disney, Universal, and SeaWorld pretty well. So I'll be very, I feel very comfortable talking about them from a booking vacation perspective. But all of this is fake, so please don't take any of the content that you see as being absolutely true. It's relatively accurate, but you know, I certainly don't represent them, so don't please. Uh, don't uh, take what I'm showing from a content perspective as being absolutely correct. Okay, but in any event, I, you know, since I enjoy going vacationing there, I figured I would use that as my example. All right, so let me go ahead and get out a slideshow and let's go into Sitecore. Okay, so with that being said, um, I'm going to log into Sitecore, and uh, I just want to point out one or two more things about. Uh, which will add to my page testing demo from the previous video, which I wanted to show you in this video. And one of them is showing you a report of the page test. Since I launched a page test in the last video, uh, I needed to run the test for a little while before I can come back and show you what the report would look like. So now in this video, I will complete that discussion and then we'll jump right into A-B testing. So with that being said, I'm going to click on the experience optimization tool. Okay. And uh, under lists, I'm going to click on active tests. And then if I want to examine how a current test is going, I could just click on it. And I'm going to click on the one for SeaWorld because that's the one I used for the page test. And that's going to bring up a report which should come up shortly. Okay, here we are. So a note that at the uh, at the base of this report, we get to see what's going on from an engagement value perspective as well as a conversion rate perspective for both SeaWorld and, I mean, well, they're both SeaWorld, but for both variations of the SeaWorld page. So I'm testing version one of the page versus version two of the page. So if I go to version two, okay, version two highlights the Kraken roller coaster. So I figured this would attract people to the park. And note that per visit, I'm getting 200 points. Um, the booking is actually 100 points. So that means that people are booking twice, which is great because that's, you know, if they can book more than once per visit, that's certainly something I want to see. So if I wanted to pick this as the winner, I probably could right now. Well, I know I can't pick it as the winner right now, but um, based on the results, I might decide to do that. If you scroll down this column on the right-hand side, you'll see some charts which are meant to highlight some information regarding what's going on from a goals converted point of view and which page what page is getting my top clicks and then bounce rate meaning you know how long am I on the page before I move somewhere else and what have you so that's what this information is providing from a marketing standpoint if I click on version one of the page that's the one involving Shamu so I decided to start with that and it's actually indicating that if, when people see Shamu, I'm probably getting 40% less interaction than I would with the version 2 of the page, so which is currently out there. So with that being the case, um, I'm more lining, leaning towards using version 2 than version 1 at this moment. And you get a similar set of tables to let you know how the conversion rate is going, uh, where do I tend to go the most when I'm on this page, um, how often am I getting those bookings, bounce rates, things of that nature. So... Um, 
that's the information that the page testing report gives you. Okay. All right. So um, that's what I want to show you in regards to page tests. And to give you a better sense of how this is working from a testing perspective, which is what I also want to show you last time, the way this test works is that if I try to go to the site in a live sense, which is what I'm doing, and particularly if I navigate directly to that page, I'm either getting version one of the page or version two of the page. So note that uh, in this particular example, I'm getting version two of the page and what it's monitoring is whether I click on this book now button and book the vacation. If I get to the book vacation page, then I get credit for booking the vacation uh, while I came to this page. So um, I'm going to close this and relaunch an incognito page. And I'm going to go back to the exact same URL, but if I do, note that I get version 2 instead. So that's the way the test works. When people visit the live site, they're either going to get version 1 and version 2. And what Sitecore is monitoring is, hey, did they decide to book a vacation with me or not? So let's say in this example, I decide that, oh, I do want to get on a Kraken ride. I'm going to book this vacation. All right, here's my booking is done page. Note that I'm not clicking in any information. The purpose is just to get me to this page. And it's actually on this page that I record that you book the vacation and give you the engagement value based on completing that activity. So that's what's going on here. Okay. So the fact that I'm not collecting credit card information sort of uh, confirms the fact that this is a fake site. <laughs> so that's why I'm not asking anyone for any information. I'm just going right to booking is done. Okay. But in any event, the point being that when the test is conducted, you get one of two versions. And then if they book the vacation and get to this page, they get credit for booking a vacation. Okay. And then, of course, in the test results, I then want to see who's getting this page most often, because that's the one that will end up being the winner in the end. All right. So now that we talked about this, what I want to do is start talking about A-B testing. So I'm going to go back out to the launch pad, and I'm going to go into the desktop, and we're going to start talking about that. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the content editor, and this is what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I have three vacation packages I'm focusing on from an Orlando perspective. I'm specifically focusing on Disney, SeaWorld, and Universal. I used SeaWorld for my page test. I'm going to use Disney to show you what happens once an A-B test has been rolling for a while and you get results. I want to use Universal to actually create an A-B test. So this one doesn't have a test on it running yet. So I'm going to use this one to create my A-B test. You can see what that process looks like. So what I'm going to do is click on Universal Studios Orlando. And I'm then going to go to the Publish tab up in the ribbon and go directly into the Experience Editor, which means it will put me into edit mode. And I want to do that because you have to be in edit mode to set up and then kick off a test. Okay, for the most part. Uh, the one exception I would probably say to that is that note that here I can create a test once the options needed to set up the test are already done. So I can't kick off a test from the content editor, but it does require me to set up the test itself in the experience editor. So, or at least it's the easiest way to do it in my opinion. So with that being the case, I'm going to click on publish followed by experience editor. And then once I have this in edit mode in the experience editor, I'll then focus my attention on setting up the test. Okay, it's giving me the option to create a test because one of my components is already ready for testing purposes, but I'm going to focus on the component I want to update for testing purposes, which is this event intro component right here in the middle of the page. Because I set up a couple of data sources for this component. The one it's using right now is for Transformers because I'm hoping to get people to come to Universal if they're Transformers fan, like me, by the way. Um, but now I want to uh, vary the page somewhat because I want to see... Who is more likely to come to my page to book a vacation at Universal? Or is it my Transformer fans? Is it my Harry Potter fans? Or is it people who want to actually go to Volcano Bay, which is their latest and greatest park? So with that being the case, this is the button you would click on to set up the test. Okay. And when you click on that button, you can then set up the variation on that component to, to test against. Now note that we're using components in Sitecore to set up our, our tests. When you use components to build a Sitecore page, which is a best practice, not only does it make building the pages that much easier for your content authors who don't have to be developers anymore, um, it also lends itself directly to the analytics mechanisms that Sitecore provides out of the box, one of them being testing. So if you have components, uh, a marketer or an author, once they learn how to do this, can set up the test themselves. At this point, they don't have to involve 
a, a developer to help set it up. Certainly testing and things of that nature can be coded if you're doing something very unique, but otherwise, if it's something that Psychosoft puts right out of the box, there's no reason for it to involve a developer at this point. Anyone who understands this part of it, uh, who's not a developer, can certainly set up the test and run it themselves. And that's really the whole point uh, of how Psychor wants you to work with this. So if you build your pages with components, they can be tested with right out of the box without any additional development. So with that being said, right now the only variation I have is the one using the transformers data source. What I'm going to do is click on new variation to add an additional variation to test against. So if I want to change the data source, I would click on the ellipse all the way at the end. Uh, right now it's taking me to where my data sources are under universal. I'm going to choose the Harry Potter one and click on OK. Okay, so now variation two will have Harry Potter and I will call it that. So it's clear to me that that's the variation that I'm testing against. And while I'm at it, I'm going to change original to Transformers because I might forget when I look at this in a certain report that the original has the Transformers uh, content in it. Okay, by the way, that's not the only thing you can do. From a testing standpoint, you can hide the component if you think that actually hiding it will add value, addition by subtraction, so to speak, in terms of getting people to book the vacation. Or if you choose enable variation of component design, if you have multiple components that can be added to that placeholder, you can actually replace this component with a whole different component that you think will actually get people to book vacations rather than the original component that's placed on the page. Uh, I won't do anything like that in this particular example. I'm just going to stick to changing data sources. So I'm going to add one more variation. And in this variation, I'm going to choose my three park image, which will highlight Volcano Bay. And then for the variation name, assuming I could spell it correctly, I'll type in Volcano Bay Park to make it clear that this one will emphasize the Volcano Bay Park a little bit more. All right. Once I'm done, I click on OK. And now, uh, if I want to see what these look like before I test against them, I can certainly click on the downward arrow, choose a different variation. And this is the image I'm using for Volcano Pay, where I'm highlighting it as part of your Universal Orlando experience. And then if I scroll down and click on Harry Potter, this is the image I'm using for the Harry Potter uh, variation, where I want people who are interested in Harry Potter to certainly come to Universal. Okay, so those are the three variations I'm testing against to determine which type of fan is most likely to book a vacation from my site. Because the fan that, that uh, does the most bookings gets their variation on the site. So that's what it means. Okay, so once I have this set, there's a couple of ways I can kick this off. The first thing I better do, though, is I better save it. Okay, uh, I'm getting a Brooklyn Lynx error, but I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, and then the next thing I would do before I kick off the test is I would publish my latest changes out. So I'll go back to my content editor tab and I will do a site level publish. Because if the latest and greatest changes are not on the live site, it's sort of hard to launch a test against the live site. Bear in mind that when you run a test, the test takes place on the live site, but where you see the results are on the content management side, which is a good thing because you don't want visitors to your site having access to the test that you're running from a results perspective. So while it's running on the content delivery side, the actual results are examined on the content management side. Okay, so once I'm ready to launch my test, I can either click on create a test here, or I can click on create a test here, which will be one of the notifications below the ribbon. So what I'm gonna do is click on create a test. All right. And I could tell just by the number of variations that it's it's acting like a multivariate test where it's involving more than one component. So while it's done, it's spinning, what I'm going to do is remove the check mark from subscribe form because I only want to do an A-B test involving the event intro. If I do that and go back to preview, it should just show me the three variations, my transformer, my Harry Potter, my Volcano Pay Park. Okay. Um, I'm nearing the end of this video, so what I'm going to do is pause it here. Uh, I'm going to run a part four where I will complete this example and then talk about what you can expect when you're examining results. Okay, see you in the next video.